Hello, welcome back to IT Landy Nugget course, part 3B. We spoke about audit things, we spoke about the categories, type of categories. Next is the audit policy recommendation. There are some audit policy category or subcategories. Windows by default, baseline recommendation, stronger recommendation. Let's just start with some of them. We're not, not going to read all of these, but it's here for you. You can review it and you can cover it with relation to account login, account management, detail tracking, audit credential validation. No, no. Baseline, yes. Stronger, yes. For failure and success. Kerberos. Ticket, Kerberos operation, audit, other account. You can see by default it's not applicable for both based on recommendation and Windows default, but for stronger recommendation, yes, I need to enable it for success and failure. With relation to account management, audit application group management, audit computer account management, audit distribution group management, audit other type of management and user management. You can see here by default, apart from the user account management, yes, the rest are not even enabled. But for baseline security recommendation, for success, yes, all of them, but for failure, no. But stronger recommendation for both, yes, for failure and success. The last part is detailed tracking. You can see for audit, DP, API activity, audit process creation, termination, and RPC events are not applicable by default, which means you need to go and enable them. Baseline, yes for success, no for failure. The recommendation, but if you want something stronger, you need to enable it both. More around policy for direct access and log on and log off. For uh, direct access, you can see audit detail directory, audit directly surface changes or application. There is no recommendation for this one to be enabled. However, for login and log off, audit log out need to be enabled. Yes. For success, for logout, for uh, failure, no. Audit user device claims, IPsec. Log of logon, network policy, and special logon. You can see them yes for all the success and no for the failure. But if you want something stronger, then you will need to go both. You capture the login, the failure, and the success. Okay. Next, object access. Audit application, certification, file share, system, handler, kernel. You see by default, it's just black. It's an object access, so you can choose to enable or not. But you can see here the recommendation is leave it as it is. The last one is audit policies for policy changes, privilege use, and system object access. You need to take care of the audit policy changes, authorization, authentication, privileges, privileges, driver, security, because this, when you enable them, for example, the system, you need to capture every success, activity, and failure. Same thing for baseline. Yeah. So this is really important. Okay. And you should take care of that one. And the last part for this part 3B is monitor the following to help you detect attempts to compromise your AD domain services, ADDS. Systems for disabling or removal of antivirus and T-mailsware software, admin account for unauthorized changes, activity that are performed by using privilege account, privilege and VIP account in ADDS monitor for changes, practically changes to attribute on the account, changes to the properties, membership, like enterprise admin, domain admin, schema admin, administrator, disable privilege account, use PIM management account to log all the right to the account. These are the 
high level and best practice around money trends. That was all that I had to do for today and we should basically uh, catch up for the planning for the compromise, which is the next session. Goodbye for, my, for now. Thank you.